Hi friends, my name is Katie and I am the education coordinator here at Zoo Montana and today we're going to be talking about animal adaptation. Adaptations has a lot of different scientific definitions. So here's the one we're using today. An animal adaptation is something that is either physically on an animal's body or it's a behavior that they do that helps them to survive. For example, we have the amazingly tough scales and skin and bones of the alligators as well as the tusks of a warthog, which they use to help dig tunnels. How cool is that? An example of a behavioral adaptation is hibernation or going to sleep through the winter, right? Like many animals do here in the Northern Hemisphere. Now today, we're going to be meeting an arachnid. Now that's not to be confused with an insect. Insects are lots of other animals that have three body parts, the head, the thorax, and the abdomen, and six legs and typically have antennae while arachnids have two body parts, the cephalothorax, head chest, and the abdomen, and eight legs. Now, we're going to be meeting the arachnid, and we're going to be learning about her adaptations today. This here is Taboo, and Taboo is a Chilean rose-haired tarantula. Now, they are from the country of Chile and South America, and like most spiders, have incredible adaptations. We are going to be talking about a few of them today. The first one I want to talk about are her defenses. And that's actually multiple different adaptations right there. You'd think with spiders that their main adaptation for defense is to bite, but actually that's the very last resort. The first thing that she's going to do if she's scared is try to make herself look bigger. This is a very common tactic, a behavioral adaptation that many animals use in the animal kingdom, and she is no exception. If she gets scared, she is going to rear up on her back four legs, show off her fangs, try to make herself look big and scary. Now, that would work on me, I'd be running the other direction. But if it doesn't work for the predator, she's got another trick up her sleeve. It's these little hairs on her body. You see how fuzzy she is? Those little hairs have tons of important uses. But for defense purposes, these hairs are actually very soft, which doesn't sound like it'd be a good defense. Except, have you ever had an eyelash fall into your eye? It gets very pokey and itchy really quick. So. If getting bigger doesn't make herself look scary to her predator, then she can turn her around, her abdomen towards her predator, and kick off the little hairs on the abdomen. When she does that, they float through the air, get into the nose or the eyes, or even the ears of a predator, and make them very itchy, hopefully distracting them long enough for her to run away. Finally, if nothing else works, she might try to bite her predator. She has pretty good sized fangs, but her venom is only strong enough to eat her prey, which are insects, not mammals or larger animals like birds. So if she bites her predator, then it's going to hurt and maybe distract them long enough for her to run away. But it also puts her in harm's way, putting her next to the animal that she's scared of. So it's not always the best defense for her. Now those hairs have another fun function. They are sensory. Sort of like the whiskers on a cat or a dog, the little hairs on her body can help her sense her environment. They're extremely sensitive to any change in the air around her, which means she's basically hearing with some of these hairs on her body. So not only are they a great defense, but they help her sense her environment, which is amazing. Now my favorite adaptation of hers are super tiny. So I'm gonna bring her close to show you. All right, so Taboo here, has retractable claws. And if you look really closely at this little toe right here, on these little toes right there, you'll notice that she has claws sticking out of that foot. She has two tiny little hook shaped claws and they're helping her hold on to the ridges in my feet, in my handprint, which is amazing. They use these itty bitty claws to climb up their webs or to climb over on logs and rocks. And what's really cool about their webs is that they're usually underground. And even better about these little claws, they're retractable like a cat's. So that means that she can take them out when she needs to hold on to things, keeping them sharp to find tiny little cracks and surfaces, or she can put them back inside her paw so that she, when she doesn't need them. So it's a really amazing adaptation. Now, I want you to find your favorite, either arachnid or you can find an insect. Make sure you know which is which and tell your teacher some of its adaptations. See you next time, friends.